In this video, I'm going to show you how to start your first project and then begin working with the task list. From the home screen, choose Projects. You'll be taken to the Projects Home, which shows you a list of all of the active projects and planning projects that you're assigned to or that you're working on. In this case, I have many different projects that I've already started. You may see no projects when you first start the Project Insight. To add your very first project, choose the plus project button. And then you'll be taken to the project add edit screen where you can add the name of your project. In this case, I'll name it client implementation. If you have templates installed, you can choose and you've made templates already. You can actually choose from a predefined template, which will copy all of the tasks and settings from your template into your new project. In this case, I'm going to not choose any template and simply create a basic project. There are other fields as well, like budget or scorecard tabs and other inputs like the description and then company, rate cards, departments. Your screen will be different depending on your configuration and the add-ons that you've chosen. In this case, I'm just gonna choose to simply name my project, set the schedule start date. In this case, I wanna start this project on September 5th and by choosing this date, it will automatically shift task uh, dates in the project for you, which I'll go over in a minute when I get to the task list. But once you've done, you're done setting up your basic inputs for your first project, choose save, and then you'll be taken to the task list. And in my case, I have a very blank task list because I um, chose to uh, pick a new project that has no tasks. I am going to navigate to an, another project that I already set up to go over um, the task list in more detail. From the task list, I'm going to give you a couple tips here. There is a more extensive video on how to use the task list at the bottom. So if once you're done with this video, you may want to uh, watch the more extensive video if you need more information on how to use the task list. From here, you can add a new task by choosing plus task. If you choose add in line, or you can just navigate down to here into the blue box. That's where you'll add new tasks at the bottom of the list. Or you could use the full task add edit form by choosing this one, add tasks from an existing template, or you can import tasks from Excel or Microsoft Project. There are separate videos on those processes on those screens. In this view, you can filter your task list by choosing filters or choose from existing layouts that you may have already saved. And what a layout is are a set of columns that have been chosen. In this case, I'm just showing the default columns, but these are all configurable for your specific need. And then over here, you can expand all top level or you can collapse all, the, all of the tap, top level tasks as well. So here I'm gonna talk a little bit about the task list. These bold tasks are summary tasks. That means that they're calculated based on the sum of their children tasks. You can have as many summary tasks as you want. You can have as much levels of summary tasks as you would like. The amount of summary tasks and how you set it up is up to you. To add a brand new summary task, you can go down to the bottom and let's say I'm gonna add a testing phase in my finalize uh, summary already. This is expanded. Because this is expanded, this task will be made as a child of there. To make a task a summary task, choose this option and I'll now have a brand new summary task. And because this arrow is opened, any child task that I add into here, so if I add a child task and I give it a duration and some work, and I'll just simply hit the enter key, now I have a child task in this summary and I can collapse these summaries just by clicking here in this little arrow. So at this point, I'm gonna talk a little bit about intelligent scheduling. Project Insight has an intelligent scheduling engine, which means that tasks dates are calculated based on the duration of the task and how many hours the task has to do and any predecessors, or predecessors that you have created for the task. If I want to make a, t uh, a successor task, which is the task that happens after the previous task, I'm just going to name it kind of funny for this demo, uh, purpose of this demo. I'll give it 
five days to get done and I'll explain that a little bit more uh, with four hours of work and then if I wouldn't like this to happen right after the task before it note that this is task number 15 I can simply choose 15 in here and I can hit the enter key and the dates of this task you can see uh, the predecessor starts on uh, Tuesday to Tuesday and then the next task starts Wednesday to Wednesday or to the following week the following Tuesday you can very quickly see this in the Gantt chart if I just navigate over to the Gantt chart you can see if I expand that testing phase I have these two tasks here this task is a successor if we happen to just move this task into the future to another date in this case I'm actually making it a longer task the other task automatically shifts over and its dates are calculated and changed. If I move this task all the way over to here, the whole thing shifts. That's what's good about intelligent scheduling. If I navigate back to the task list, you'll see the dates have all changed because I uh, manipulated them on the Gantt chart. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about duration and work. Uh, task, uh, uh, task A here has a duration of 10 days and default of 80 hours. The duration is how many business days you're giving someone to actually get the task done. So that is what drives the dates of the task. But it's really important here to use the work hours. And this is how hard a task, how much hours or effort it takes, it takes to actually get a task done. This task, we may give someone 10 days to do it, but we want to, but it's really only eight hours of collective work, meaning if they sat down and did the work for eight hours, it would get done. But by making it take 10 days, it gives them a little bit of slack in the schedule to get it done because the reality is not everybody can do everything all at once. And so most tasks you want to give it some duration and effort. Those are two different concepts. When you want to assign the task, you can choose to edit resources. I'll just assign this to Brett Favre click OK and this one I also want to make a predecessor to the prior task 16 I want to make it a predecessor and I can hit the save button or enter key and it will calculate now based on the prior prior task so here I have task a it will happen after the end of the previous task because it's a successor one more thing on the task list to help you get started a couple more things here is you can also add predecessors through a graphical interface if you want to choose a predecessor this way I simply select it click OK and now identify objectives is the predecessor here I can add the name name of my task whatever your task is you should name it like if you're gonna build build some software you'll do that here and you can add the resources like I showed a minute ago, pick who's going to do the work. You can add the work here and you can act, actually add multiple people to the task um, and have it have definite more than one person doing it and click save. And now I have a new task. It happens after identify objectives and this, ver this very much works like Microsoft Project. So this is how you can kind of get started with the task list a couple other features to note here that you may want to explore is the ability to check all non summary tasks for example and then right mouse click and bulk edit you can choose to change the duration or the work or who the task owner is uh, of some different some fields that you can these are fields that you can bulk edit uh, using this uh, checkbox here so the, over here on the right is the bulk editor where you can check all and right mouse click in here to pull up the menu where you can add assignment remove an assignment or bulk edit these tasks that helps quite a bit for if you're doing a lot of effort and one other final thing is you can copy a task by choosing copy and you can copy it to another project or um, you can copy it inside the same project so I encourage you to watch the how to use the task list video on the task list for more information on how to get your first project started.